in her topic for tonight entitled Nothing But The Truth. So everyone, please stand up and join me with a big round of applause in welcoming our fellow sister in Christ, Honorable Former Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Serena. Thank you very much. Nothing but the truth. Uh, yes, nothing but the truth, but let's do it in a way that is really pleasing, honorable, and as was emphasized by uh, Pastor Anthony, transformative. So allow me to say, to discuss with you what I consider as the truth. The truth. What is the truth? And for this particular audience, and I was given the impression that many of you have come from either the NMEC or from uh, churches that share the same faith, but even those who do not share the evangelical faith or tradition, I am uh, very sure that you are open to the things of God. So to those for whom Christ is Lord and Savior, what is the truth? We are saved not only for eternal life, because there is the danger that, that we just look at the afterlife, but we forget what is in store for us here. We are saved to enjoy God and enjoy Him now and forever. And it is a truth that we must carry on in our daily lives and no persecution can destroy that truth. Second, we are new creations. Christ's workmanship for good works, that we may walk in them. You have the creation of the first man and woman in Genesis. And then you go through an entire account of the Bible until Christ becomes the first among many brothers, and those who follow him are called as new creation. Remember when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, Jesus was rebuking him. You don't even know you are a teacher of the law, but you don't know these truths. That, that birth comes from the new spirit. So we are told in the epistles of Paul that we are indeed when we give our lives to Christ, our lives entirely become embraced in him and we are made into new creation. And in Ephesians 2.10, we are called as Christ's workmanship, created for good works that have been prepared for us in advance that we should walk in them. Those are very transformative truths and nobody can diminish the truth that the moment that we lay down our lives and say, Lord, you are my Savior. You are my Lord. I am completely yours. Those good works preceded even the formation of any of the cells of our body. Remember in Psalm 139, before any of my unformed parts were made in depth in the depths of the earth, you saw my unformed body. So even from eternity, God has his plans for his people. And part of his plans is to let us just not be limited to thinking about life after life after death, but rather to find out what we are to do in this life. And our hearts have been made for good works in Christ. Why is our heart being made for good works? Because Christ is the image after whom we are being formed after once we become God's children. And so if we are saying that we are born again, it is instinctive for our hearts to cry. And this is very natural. And if you don't feel this, then maybe there is something wrong when you try to say that you're a Christian. Our hearts should instinctively cry, Abba, Father, 
May your kingdom come, may your will be done now on earth as it is in heaven. It is not even something that has to be really taught to us every Sunday, but it must cry instinctively because we are his children and we are longing to see his kingdom on earth. That is why our prayer for God's kingdom to be on earth now is real because the truth is our souls groan together with all of creation for Christ's return on earth. So when in the epistles we hear this phrase at the end, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. It is natural. It is like breathing to us. Because in Romans 8.22, we are told by Paul, not only that our own souls are groaning, but all creation is groaning with us. So that the pains of the childbirth of the sons of God is being awaited to be fully revealed. We are all waiting for the greatest revelation to come, that the Lord will unveil those who are his. And this is a profound truth that if we are his children, we want his will, his commands to be followed in every area of life, and in the world, because the world does not act in conformity with God's design, and because we are made for him, something always has to clash. It is very painful for us, and our souls actually groan in suffering. So if you are so contented in this world, and you are not suffering for a heavenly kingdom, for the eternal city, as Abraham lived in tents hoping for that eternal city, which will be forever, then there is something wrong. You do not know Christ. You have to go back to Pastor Anthony. And from this suffering, you understand that even wealthy Lot, you see, Lot, when he separated from Abraham, he was given the choice part. He had a fantastic herd of cattle, slaves, and he was a very wealthy man. And he chose to live on the more fertile areas of Sodom. But even in his wealth, Second Peter tells us that he suffered. So many of you here are wealthy. We don't deny that. But if you are in Christ, you must be suffering inside. And why? Because According to Peter, Lot was greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked. For as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over the lawless deeds that he saw and heard. I don't know of any man whom you can smell the aura of holiness who was not suffering inwardly, lamenting about the presence of evil. And that is why our prayer for God's kingdom to come on earth is now. Because the truth is, until Christ returns and this full redemption of creation happens, we Christians, we who are God's children, groan and lament. Contrary to a popular sector of those who call themselves Christians who always enjoy talking about prosperity, Christians deep down who know their Savior lament. And lamenting because of the presence of evil is precious in the sight of God. Another truth is that our prayer actually for God's kingdom, for us to be overcome yours, they have already been answered because God has assured us of victory. It is very difficult for Christians in this evil world to think that they are victorious. But that is the truth. Because Christ has already triumphed over the powers of this world. 
But we forget that not only has Christ triumphed over the powers of this world, but we are actually seated at heavenly places, which means that every spiritual blessing has been conferred on us, has been given on us. For us to pray for success in this area or not, for us to reclaim this territory or not, for us to see more righteous businesses flourish, for us to see the accountancy profession becoming more righteous, for us to see Christians living more lives in integrity. All of that is there. Note how Paul greeted the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when you greet someone, you call him his name. You call this person Randall. Paul was saying, blessed be you, Randall, for you have been blessed in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. But we don't look at ourselves as victorious, as seated at the heavenly places with Christ, and as having been blessed with every spiritual blessing. Can you imagine the energy, those of you who are science-minded, the kind of energy that allowed a decaying body that had lain in the tomb for three days to be regenerated, Christ was saying that the same energy that God used to raise up Christ and in fact to create the entire universe is powerfully working in each of us. But have we looked at life that way? Have we considered that when we look at the business deal, you actually have every spiritual blessing in order to have a different way of looking at that business so that it can be a blessing and an advancement of the kingdom of God. But instead, we shirk. We boss, paano ba? Makabawas ng, uh, paano ba, ba makabawa? Ano bang taxes na pwedeng hindi ko bayaran? Boss, sino bang pwede kong lagyan sa pier? But we don't know that the kind of power and energy and resources and the heavenly host ready to answer our call is the same kind of cosmic forces that created the entire universe, galaxies and galaxies, that made Jesus' decaying body rise from the dead. That is the kind of cosmic force available to each of us. And yet we live as if we don't understand this cosmic force. Rather, we want to live in a small world with very narrow eyes that looks only at trivial things and things that rot away and rust and are destroyed. But what is needed is for us to proclaim the victory that was already sealed when Christ rose from the dead after he paid for all the sins of those who have asked the Lord to be their Lord and Savior. That truth alone should allow us to live with a very eternal view of life and to see our profession as just part of that great creation design where the glory of God is being displayed because you are a fantastic businessman and you keep on thinking about the good of your customers, the good of creation, and the good of the church, and the good of those who are suffering in this world. It allows you to have an expansive view, not only limited by what your friends or your even your parents tell you, but to see that one day you will be singing with the angels and maybe there will be a song about your hardware store as part of God's design to display his goodness. We are storytellers. We are bound to be storytellers. And our stories should live in eternity. 
They should form part of the great songs of triumph of the children of God. Because remember, the apex of God's creation is man. And he becomes a completely new creation when he lives his life in Christ. It is a shortfall, a failure of our imagination that we live puny lives on earth, always stressed, always disappointed, always frustrated, ranting on Facebook. It's a small world we live, but that is not the kind of world God is asking us to live. And we forget how to read Matthew 28, 19 to 20 with a great eternal view. God's victory includes the discipling of nations. Yes, Pastor Anthony, you have to make sure that every member of the new millennium evangelical church is being prayed for and that those who live in the near areas are prayed for, but not forget that in the language of Matthew 28, 19 to 20, God is asking you to look at nations, the Philippines, as a state, as a political body, to be discipled. That means every area of governance in the Philippines must be submitted to Christ. And that is the vision when Isaiah was saying that Christ's, the government shall be on the shoulders of Christ, is actually expecting that New Millennium Evangelical Church will give a foretaste of the just governance by praying for just governance to be experienced in Bayang Pilipinas. Because the Philippines is under your jurisdiction, your spiritual jurisdiction. Paul was saying, do you not know that you will judge the angels? So do you not know that you will rule over nations and cities? Do you not know that the jurisdiction over geographical areas has already been given to the church? But the church has retreated and is living narrow parochial lives without a vision for the country, without a vision for our children and grandchildren. Rather, we are just saying, anak, kumuha ka ng magandang grade kasi mag apply ka sa Canada. Since when has the Church of Christ fallen so far from the early fathers who had a vision of the entire world being saturated with the knowledge of God? To the early fathers, there was no primitive land. There was only God's land to be liberated. To us Christians, the Philippines is not a poor country that we must abandon. Rather, it must be renewed in the name of Christ. That is the kind of vision. And when he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing, claiming them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit, teaching Filipinas to observe all that I have commanded you, my disciples. So look at Matthew 5 and 6. Look at the Sermon on the Mount. Know how it is to love and have compassion. And that is how you disciple Filipinas. You teach them Matthew 5. You teach them Matthew 6. You teach them Matthew 23, 23. You Pharisees, hypocrites, woe to you. For you strain and are so diligent in giving a tenth of your deal and your coming, but you forget the weightier matters of the law, which are justice, number one, mercy, number two, and faith. Those regulations, this you must observe, without forgetting the temple regulations. If they are number one, two, and three in Matthew 23, 23, by the words of Christ himself, are we teaching them? Are our churches, are our churches saying, okay lang ang primary 
teachings natin should be, what Jesus is saying are the primary elements of the law. Most important, weightier matters. So bakit pa tayo naghihirap maghanap kung paano tayo magpreprioritize ng program natin sa church? Kung si Jesus na mismo nagsabi kung anong pinaka-importante. Justice, mercy, faith. Which is the exact counterpart of a Micah 6.8. For God has shown you, O man, what is the things that are needful for you to do. Diba? Micah 6.8. First, act justly. Second, love mercy. Third, walk humbly in faith with your God. Jesus was not wiping away the Old Testament. He was continuing it in a more perfect, redeemed form by setting himself as the example. And it is a bedrock truth of Christianity that unless our nation, Filipinas, displays its belief in the teachings of Christ, we cannot really call ourselves a Christian nation. It is a misnomer. Culturally, we have our fiestas, our saints, and our masses, and our churches. But we are not a discipled nation. We have forgotten our responsibility to Filipinas. And the discipling of this nation, his victory, God's victory, is not only for the whole nation to be submitted to the will and design of God, but it is also for the church to find out God's gifts to Filipinas. The same that all the races, all the peoples in the Bible had characteristics and were enabled and empowered to do something. Every nation has a gift, a design path to God's shalom. And while we know that it will only be complete, shalom, peace, wholeness, harmony, completeness, will only be complete when Christ returns, we who are salt and light of the earth, hands and feet of Christ, must act in a way that we give them a foretaste of the return of Christ. Unless they smell in us, something of the eternal, something beautiful and ineffable, that there is something awaiting them, a beautiful future, because of the way we lead our lives, because of our language, because of how we relate to people, then how will they believe in the shalom that is promised by our Lord? They must see it. They must taste it. Come and taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Are we allowing our people to see and taste that the Lord, he is good? It is therefore the responsibility of Filipino Christians to seek and be faithful to that path, the design of God for shalom in our nation. By living lives of integrity, diligently seeking his will and wisdom, in God's word, being sensitive to the tools and gifts that God has given Filipinos, and learning to read the times and seasons like the sons of Issachar. We must understand that there can be a time when the old wineskin is no longer good, but the new wineskin requires us to talk and to sing and to live in a different way because God's season is a fresh and he has given us a fresh wind we must be like the sons of Issachar who was described by first chronicles 12 32 as understanding of the times to know what Israel could do and all their kinsmen under their command they could understand this is the time when Christians must understand what artificial intelligence can and cannot do, how it can be used for evil and how it can be used for good. This is the time when Christian parents must understand 
that their children and that their children and nieces and nephews and the youth are talking about mental health. This is the time when norms of sexuality are being challenged and the young people are leaving church because those issues are not being faced. This is the time when people are looking for answers elsewhere in Eastern mysticism because the church refused to face the fact that the question of meaning in society and how the church builds and contributes to the community, those questions are not being answered. And so they go to the left and right looking for answers elsewhere. This is the time when old formulas no longer work. This is the time when in humility, the church must repent. Okay. For me, what is the core of my truth? My core consists of the following truth. I know I have been made complete in Christ. In 72, the scripture is very clear. When you surrender your life in Christ, you are already complete. You're a complete being. You are a new creation. It is just the walking that you have to watch out for. But you lack nothing. So the ambitions in this world are not for me to be a complete person. I do not need to be a lawyer to be a complete person. I am called to be a lawyer. I do not need to be a member of the judiciary to be a complete lawyer. I am called to be a member of the judiciary. I did not aim to be a chief justice so that I can say that I am number one in the world. I am called to serve as chief justice. It is not to complete you that you are being your, given your businesses and your careers and your academic credentials. It is your call. You are being called to serve and to show the excellencies of Christ. You are being asked to show how a Christian businessman is different. The joy in you, the refusal to do dishonest things, the, the ever non-ceasing desire to be of service to your community that makes you stand apart. You are not asked to be the richest businessman. No Christian is being asked to be the richest businessman. You may be called to be the richest. It is your calling. It is how you give the world a foretaste of the kingdom of God. And every time they taste the sweet aroma of Christ in how you live your life, in the episode it says, when you live this, then they will praise God your creator. They may not say it out loud, but they are praising God in their hearts because of you. Because you gave them a taste of God's truth, justice, mercy, compassion, kindness, gentleness, excellence, beauty, nobility, wisdom. You allowed them to see what is possible in God's kingdom. And that is your ministry and your calling of each and every one without exception. As creator of this world, I see God, and this is my, I cannot imagine anything else but that God, my God, is incapable of evil, cruelty, injustice, deficiency, or powerlessness. He cannot be that. He is the opposite. There is nothing but goodness, kindness, justice, fullness, omnipotence, and omnipresence in him. The fullness of love and justice is God. And he displayed and displays his attributes not only in creation, not only in history, not only the deep longings of the hearts of man, but I see all of this. Its fullness is in Christ. Then if I am complete in Christ, therefore I seek validation and fulfillment only in his approval, not the approval of men. The approval of men do not really matter. I thank God 
If I am approved, I thank God that I was made valedictorian. I thank God I was made chief justice. But I do not need the approval and stamp of the world for my validation and affirmation. I come from a poor, poor family and by God's grace, I was raised into a higher socioeconomic status. Praise God. That is all his work in me. I graduated valedictorian at the UP College of Law. Praise God. All of it was still Christ's work. Where I failed, I failed in my weakness that I submitted to Christ. Still, Christ will be the overcomer of my weaknesses. And even my weaknesses he will use so that I will rely on him for strength and that that will be a redemptive story and that will be a beautiful story I can tell all who are also experiencing with these weaknesses. When I was lifted up as chief justice and I am praised all over the world and I am introduced in glowing terms, my title, my honor, my power, my perks, opportunities, I do not own them, not even a bit of them. I hold them lightly, ready to give up anytime. All of these are for his glory, not mine. Let Christ increase and let me decrease. And when I was unjustly removed as chief of justice, even through all that injustice, all things work together for good. To those who love God and are called to conform to Christ. Romans 8.28 is my undying motto. Everything, everything, everything will turn out for good to those who love God because God has a plan. And not for me alone. So my injustice, it, is, it did not say all things work together for good to those who are experiencing them. No. All things work together for good to those who love God. So the injustice I suffered, I must believe, and I see it, that it will also work good in you. If I had not left the Supreme Court as Chief Justice, we would not be able to have this conversation. So Romans 8.28 allows a person who deserved nothing to be honored by God by being given the highest title in the land, in the field of justice, God will allow that person to be humiliated and suffer injustice. And yet in the midst of all of this, there is this deep peace that nothing can break. So when I was being interviewed and Karen Davili was asking, why are you smiling? Why? Is your face like that after you had just been removed? Because all things work together for good. You mean it was not painful? Oh, it was so deeply painful. It was so deeply painful for Joseph so that he named his children as forgetfulness so that he couldn't forget the pain. But the amazing thing is that God lets you deal with the pain. Did you not feel depressed? Of course, countless mornings when I didn't want to get up. But God let me get up. Didn't they tell you you're already useless? Yes, so many times I heard I am done for. But God did not fail to give me eyes that could see a long-term vision. Who was to tell the world that human effort is not enough to cure the injustice in this country? Somebody who has tried her very best to bring about justice. Somebody who has tried and actually succeeded in many judicial reforms. But to be able to tell you that unless God creates transformation in that heart then there is no transformation outwardly our processes might improve but the heart of those who are serving in the judiciary will be stone dead there is still no justice and no justice 
and not even love accompanying that word. So God had to bring me through that path. It was not easy. Very difficult. I could not talk to you directly. There were so many Christians who wanted to have uh, audiences with me. I had to refuse them. Because I had to show that whether you are a believer or not, I am chief justice of all. And my duty before God and my country is to show fairness in my dealings with all men and not show partiality. I had to render an account even of all the powers and money that I was responsible for, not because I was being audited, but because God was looking at my heart. Every time I read a case file, every time I look at the money, it isn't my money. It is God's. And I have to render an account for every single cent of it. Regardless of whether you know about it or not, I needed to talk to God and be accountable to him at all times. So, are you now saying, Lord, sana hindi mo na lang siya tinanggal kasi at least alam namin walang nadudukot ni Sinko. But this is the beautiful thing. After my removal, and then I was being asked whether I wanted or I could be persuaded to lead a political slate to, uh, to aim for the highest senatorial slot. I sought the mind of God and God replied, what do you want? What is the deepest desire of your heart? Lord, I want the transformation of this nation. Then do that. Transformation, how? I've read so, I, there are so many books on transformation. But I knew that there was a particular transformation map that must belong to our country because we are a unique people. Every people is unique. And what is the truth that I now see that God has so privileged me with? I saw this vision. God is working, has been working for decades and even centuries by creating rivulets of hope that is leading to shalom for our nation. You remember I say 49, he's making a new thing. Road in the wilderness, streams in the desert. They have always been there, the rivulets of hope, and you are part of it. New Millennium Evangelical Church and why YMCA, as long as it remembers its Christian origin, you are part of the rivulets of hope. And to the extent that I could, I tried to imagine and to describe to people in my movement what it looks like. And this is what I, the best that the limited human mind could imagine. This is the vision and this is the mission of Bawat Isa Mahalaga. First, if you see all the rivulets of hope, these consist of churches, organizations, development communities, young people, even some major organizations, they are all joining a great river of God that had been activated by him from ages ago by giving us certain fantastic gifts of openness to the things of God. And he wants us to form a nation of shalom. Just imagine Basic concepts, dual identity. How can you do that? CJ, how can we come together as a people? How can we cooperate? First, can we agree that we are all created in the image of God? And that when we were created in God's image, as he describes in Genesis 1, the level of creation is such that David was able to exclaim, what is man of God? You have made him a little lower than the angels. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My inward parts, before they were being formed, you saw me. You chained and wove my being. So every DNA, every human being has a unique DNA, which means God has a unique plan for that 
human being that Imago Day. And that Imago Day is part of the great work of building our nation. Just imagine if every Filipino remembers that he has been made in the image of God, then the truth that will immediately hit him is that then I am made for God. And because he is God, he has to have a plan. And I, there is a plan for me. So I have meaning. I cannot be bullied because if my classmate is also taught by his Christian teacher that everyone is an image better, then no child can bully another. How can you bully someone who is being called by the teacher as an image bearer? You can't, right? You bully and persecute people by first dehumanizing them, degrading their image so that they forget that their origin is from the divine. If they forget that God has a plan for them, then they lose hope. Then they think of ending their lives. But if every person is told that God so loved you, that when you were being created, his, your DNA was being chained. Ginanchilyo ng Diyos. Diba? The DNA chain looks like ganchilyo. That he has a plan for you and this plan included his son giving up his life so that you will be part of the new creation. In Ephesians 2, you are a new creation. And Ephesians 4.24 is, say, says, we are we who are in Christ are new created, our new creation, and we must wear our new garment, which is in the image and likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. On creation, image of God, fall. Christ died, rose again. Those who believe in him, new creation. They are to put on new garments because now they are to walk in the true image of God, in true righteousness and holiness. That is what Paul was telling everyone all the time. And that is how you should see how Paul writes his epistles, his love letters. So if we are a new creation, and everyone, even if they have not yet given their lives to Christ, they are image bearers, how can we treat any person with indignity? How can we demean any person? How can we not be compelled to give everything, every just due to a person? How can we be cruel to a human being? It's impossible. If you see him and see Christ in him, remember in Matthew 7, away from me. Lord, we exorcise in your name. We preach the gospel in your name. We became missionaries in, in your name. Away from me, workers of wickedness. You, you come to me. Lord, bakit? Ba't kami? Kasi naalala nyo? Ito, you gave cold water to the thirsty. You clothed the naked. You fed the hungry. You did that to me. Lord, hindi namin ikaw nakita. Wala kaming Jesus nakita sa kalye. Every time you did that to a little person, you were doing that to me. Because every person is made in the image of God. And as long as, this, as that person is alive, there is a flicker of hope that that connectedness between the original design and God's plan will happen because of Christ. So there cannot be a cruel Christian misnomer yon, oxymoron yon. Hindi pwede ang Christian ang nag -e enjoy ng unjust killings. Lab ng Christiano ang naririnig mo na ang panic ng kapwa kasi nasa Old Testament yun eh. Makinig! Walang conviction ng hindi nakikinig sa panic ng kapwa. So this is the nation of Shalom that God is showing us that first identity is identity as image bearers and for the Christians, completeness in Christ. And the second identity is what God has gifted us with. 
the Constitution calls us sovereign Filipino people. Meaning, this nation, which in spiritual terms is under our spiritual jurisdiction. Remember, the, the Philippines is under the spiritual jurisdiction of new millennium evangelical church as part of the body of Christ. Not only has he given you spiritual jurisdiction, he also made the Philippine constitution call you as part of the sovereign Filipino people. Meaning, apart from praying, apart from doing mercy ministry, you are to take charge of this nation. You are not to shy away. Because the constitution, the highest law of the land has called you a sovereign Filipino people. Meaning, kayo. Pag pumalpak ang bansang ito, kasalanan natin lahat. Hindi totoo yung sinasabi na ang church at state ay hindi pwede magpakialaman kaya tayo wag makikialam sa nangyayari. Mali yun. Ang sinasabi lang ng church and state, yung mga pare at pastor, hindi sila magpapatakbo ng civil government. At kayo, yung Millennium Evangelical Church, mag-raise kayo ng pera sa pangangailangan nyo. Huwag kayong hihingi sa state funds. Yun lang ang ibig sabihin. But there is nothing that says Christians should not run for office and try to show an example of good governance. In fact, baligtad yun sa sinasabi ng Bible at ng Constitution. God has given you charge over all the earth. You are advanced ambassadors to show what good governance looks like, what the kingdom of God looks like. Pero nagtatago tayo. Tayo tayo lang ha. Tayo lang wag mag-usap sa iba. No, you are to show how a just king, how a just ruler rules. You are to show a just Christian barangay chairman in this part of Malate. You are to show how just City Hall employees can make their presence felt in Manila City Hall. You are to show how just Christ-loving politicians will run the Philippines. You are to show how a just justice decides cases. That is how you become the sovereign Filipino people and how you exercise your completeness in Christ Claiming the jurisdiction that God has already given His children. Parang ang hirap, ang dumi-dumi ng politika. Fallen ng world. Dahil ba fallen ng world? Andiyan ang sin, di ba? Si Paul nga mismo, ang gagawin ko? May, yung kasalanan, yung carnal nature ko lumalabas. Ganyan talaga, until Christ returns. Laban yan. Let's, this is war! If you think this is not war, you're in another world. This is war. We are fighting so that the fallen nature of this world we retreat as we proclaim the kingdom of God and advance and claim it. Claim Malate for Christ. Claim this barangay for Christ. Claim City Hall for Christ. Not because you want power. It is, in fact, your use of power is so regulated by God that you are ready to lose it anytime rather than compromise, rather than dishonor the name of your king. And the second thing, after, after we have already in our movement shown to our audiences how faith and a public life can be lived so that our people can benefit from the justice, the love and the mercy and the faith in Christ that we demonstrate, we, after talking to them, then we talk to them about integral faith. That every part of our life, di ba sabi ni Paul, whether I eat or drink, everything should be for the glory of God. Whether I sell anything in this hardware store or not, for the glory of God. Whether I vote for candidate A or B, it must be for the glory of God. But are we teaching our people that way? Or are we saying, sino ba ang nagbili ng boto mo? May utang ka, dyan, yan ang kampihan mo. Bakit hindi ang standard natin, everything must be for the glory of God? So that's integral faith. We have a Bible study course on integral faith. Sa church ni Grace, nagagamit na yon. Si Cora is re reading that. The uh, Some Catholic dioceses in Caloocan are already using that for basic ecclesiastical communities. 
the Christian life community of the Philippines is already using that. Assumption has used that. Payatas pastors are using that. The tribes people in Davao are using that. It requires us to make our lives whole, not broken. We cannot separate our Sunday from our Monday. Every day is the Lord's day. So we also see that the foundation of everything is spiritual warfare. So our Buklod Panalangin program, God allowed us to see that it must be done with warfare against the spiritual evil forces in this country. And that's reality, right? That's basic in the Bible. Buklod Panalangin. But this time, we don't say, Lord, bigyan mo ako ng magandang trabaho. Lord, bigyan mo ako ng magandang trabaho kasi gaganda ang lakad sa aming barangay, magkakaroon ng economic opportunities kasi ibabagsak mo ang kademonyohan ng korupsyon. We fight against the spirit of corruption that has made the cost of doing business in our country very high. That's why we cannot compete, Lord. We fight against the spiritual forces of greed. In our barangay, yung panangkay captain namin, Lord, Nagdanakaw ng pondo kaya ang mga kalye namin bako-bako. And we're doing this together with several barangays already. Sa BIR, Lord, ako BIR employee, clerk lang ako, pero I'm going to do spiritual warfare. Ayan na naman yung kolektor, nakikita ko may envelope na naman. Lord, yung spirit of green, i-bind Lord at tanggalin mo at alisin mo siya Lord. And then when groups are praying like that, do you think God can resist answering? He cannot. Because it is perfectly according to His will. He hates injustice. He hates robbery. Paulit-ulit yung hatred ni Lord for evil. Injustice and corruption, they, those things, they get His goat. <laughs> Sa American term, they get His goat. So we have buklod pa na langin. We are also helping train Christian uh, community servant leaders and Pastor Kaloy is doing that. Christians ran for the barangays this time, and many of them won. So we are now helping them develop development programs and budget plans according to Christ's thinking about what should happen in a community, according to the promptings given to their spirit. So tutulungan mo sila, bibigyan mo sila ng technical skills in Christ's name, pero ang values nila, Christian. Christ-centered. We have tamang kandidato, voters' transformation, good citizenship, and then I give a lot of lectures on the Bible and the Constitution. We have a Christian framework for national development where we uphold the Christian values that are in our Constitution and say, ang problema kasi sa mga development managers natin, yung mga naggumagawa ng development plan plans natin, nakalimutan nila na ang pinakamaimportante According to the preamble, are justice, truth, freedom, love, peace, equality. Yan ang mga values na dapat minimeasure natin. Nakalimutan ituro sa ating econ schools that private property, the use of private property as a social function. So dapat tingnan talaga yung stewardship natin. Ang daming hindi linalagay sa development plans natin na sa Christian framework of Nash for National Development, ipapasok natin. Yun ang magiging concern ng church to make sure that we please God even in the way we do our planning. And then, so we have the journey guide. We already have the lectures. We have the seven, uh, the roadmap to transformation, which I know from truth, sa nakita ko sa judiciary, madaming principles, pero din is still to seven ng mga kasama kong mga evangelical leaders during our workshop. Repentance, a recognition of God in everything. The secular world has tried for the three for the past 300 years to push God out of the equation. God has no place in public discourse. Wag niyo wag kayo magpa-pray. Wag niyo pag-usapan ng Diyos. Wrong. Recognize God in everything. Second, repent. For how far we have fallen as a people. Then third is reconcile with each other. Bawasan ang pagkakaalit-alitan. Syempre dapat talaga stand firm on your values, but there is always a place for reconciliation. Renewal of our mind in Christ now that you know that you are new creations, you look at things very differently. Biblical lens and use the constitution as the best legal tool to fight for the advancement of the kingdom. Because precisely 
the legal norms of the West are pushing God out. No, Filipinos are going to fight for the Christian space in the Philippines. Hindi natin hayaang mabawasan ang espasyo ng proclamation ng gospel dito. We will use the Constitution and all legal means at our disposal. Resistance against evil. Ang evil is not just personal, it is structural. Yung sistema, when we say structural evil, yung dekadekada na lagay ng lagay, palala ng palala every electoral cycle. Babasagin natin yun. Now we are helping raise a generation of young Christians who are not who are going to win without vote buying. At naghahanap tayo ng supporters dun sa mga tutulong sa kanila kasi dedicated sila to an agenda for the kingdom. Babasagin natin ang kultura ng korupsyon at greed. But we must do it together as a community. Reformation, itayo natin yung mga nabubuwag na institutions natin, lalo na sa edukasyon, sa health, sa natural resources. Nakikita naman natin yung posterity ng mga ating mga anak at apo na mangyayari sa kanila with those educational achievement scores, with that kind of environmental degradation, with the traffic, yan ba ang bansa na ibibigay natin sa mga apo natin? No, we're going to fight. Hindi natin i-give up ang bansang ito. It is wrong for a Christian to abandon the country that God has given him. And of course, it's always, always a joyful journey when you are advancing the kingdom because we have the joy of the Lord with us. We are walking with a joyful captain. To show you, impossible naman, Chief, ikaw, 100 kami, 104 million tayo, 110 million. 100 lang kami dito sa New Millennium Evangelical Church. Look, in the past five and a half years, I've gone around the country. These are all the allies we have. And then, these are part of the allies that we already have. How was that possible? I don't know how it was possible. But by the mercies of God, we learned technology. People sp sponsored my trips. I am going to Catholic churches, evangelical churches, schools, NGOs, youth organizations. I'm sponsored by LGUs. The young people are inviting me to talk to them about Christ and nation building and not giving up hope and what they can do. So who's going to say that God cannot transform this country? Kaya niya, di ba? Dami-dami niyang kaya gawin. Tinan niyo yung preamble. Actually, may vision mission map na tayo eh. Noon pa, hindi lang pinag-uusapan ng constitution except sino ba kasi nagiging, nagiging president, sino ba, ano, paano natin papalitan so that we don't have term limits. Yun ang problema. But if we had looked at the miraculous way God gave us EDSA, sabi ni Gary Hogan, International Justice Mission, I was in the U.S. National Prayer Breakfast in 2019. EDSA happened, God intervened to give justice to his long-suffering people. Yun ang nakita niya. Look at the preamble. We the sovereign Filipino people, tayo yun, imploring the aid of a personal almighty God. Hindi tayo divine providence, personal ang God na gusto natin. Itayo. Ano ang gusto natin? Ang social goal natin highest as a people, just and humane society. Which is what? Micah 6.8. Di ba? and establish a government that shall embody our ideals so our government is our servant, hindi natin ginagawang Panginoon ang gobyerno. Alila ng taong bayan ng gobyerno. Baligtad ang ginawa natin. Yan, secure to ourselves and the posterity, they develop our patrimony, promote the common good. Ayan, nasa Romans yan. No? The blessings of independence and democracy, yun ang gift sa atin eh. Independent tayo and democratic dapat. no? Under the rule of law, Very biblical, OT, Old Testament, rule yan, rule of law, and a regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality, and peace. So ang values natin are very Christian. Nasa Constitution. May mission, vision na tayo. But we don't talk about the Constitution that way. We only, ay, ano ba ang term limit ni Presidente? Ay, yung congressman, tatakbo na naman. Ay, si Mayor, tatak. Ay, nepotism. Patay, gano'n na lang. But we don't look at it as a visioning. Map, as our heart's desire. Tingnan nyo yung next. Uh, ito actually ang gusto ng ni Lord eh, sa atin. Binigyan tayo napaka-beautiful constitution. One of the best in the world, if not the best. 
Kasi meron doon yung love. The only constitution in the world that has love as an important social goal, as a regime that must be there here in the Philippines. Ang Diyos, ang Panginoon, because we're asking and imploring His help, tayo sovereign Filipino people, and if the Christians do not participate, then the unbelievers will run the government. The unbelievers will have their values be dominant if Christians refuse to participate. And after the sovereign Filipino people, where when we are responsible, then the government is down. Alila, servant of the people, siya. Tinan nyo? Hindi Panginoon ang presidente. Hindi idol. Ang ruling authority ng Romans 13 is the Constitution, which is the embodiment of the people. The moment you hear a president saying, bale wala yung Constitution, siya ang rebel. Hindi yung kristyanong nagsasabing sumunod ka sa Constitution. Bakit? Hindi na tayo Roman times. Nung time ni Paul, there was only one source of law. And in the consciousness of people, hindi pa nila naiisip that people can be capable of passing laws. The common people. Noon, whatever is the force of might and it belongs to the Roman emperor, yun ang source of law. Yun ang context nila. Kaya maling sabihin kayong mga democratic, sovereign, independent Filipino people behave like the slaves of the Roman Empire. You're not slaves. You're a free people. Free spiritually and free legally. Bakit tayo behave like slaves? Yan ang tagtanong sa atin ni Jesus pag bumaba. Anak, pastor ka, bakit? pero bakit? Hindi mo hinayaan na yung mga tupa mo magyabong ang kanilang civic, yung sa kanilang civic, ano, civic virtues. Naging napakagandang contributor sila. Instead, Hinayaan mo silang sabihin, ba sinabi ni Mayor, kaya sunod tayo. Kaya naman dinidiktan nila kasi ayaw nila ng accountability. A dictator is an enemy of accountability and accountability is at the heart of the Christian faith. We always render an account to our God. We are to render an account to our boss, to our master. We submit to each other. So accountability as is at the heart of Christian character. And any Christian who says, wag natin kami accountable ang powerful is doing the work of the devil. Tina nyo nga, look at Article 11, Section 1. Yan o, oh, public office is a public trust. Public officers and employees must at all times be accountable to the people. So how can they be accountable if the people do not make them accountable? Paano sila maggagawa ng render ng honest accounting sa inyo ng public works project pag hindi nyo dinemand? If there's no people asking for accountability, there cannot be accountability. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to demand it. And when you tell your flock, wag kayo mag-demand, ay mali yun. Kasama ng Christian character yung marunong humingi ng accountability. May board nga kayo, may elders nga kayo. You require reports. E di mas lalo na yung gobyernong binibigyan natin ng taxes natin up to 30% na pera naman ng Diyos. That's God's money. That's their being used. Bakit hindi nyo ihabulin? Kung linalas pa. That's part of your Christian duty to run after God's money so that it will be used for the purpose that God has blessed you with. When you pay your taxes, may duty pa rin kayong habulin yun. Kasi sa Diyos yun. Serve with utmost responsibility, integrity, loyalty, efficiency, act with patriotism and justice, and lead modest lives. Yung public officials natin, akala nila sila na yung mga tipong mga richest people in the world, no? Modesty. Modest lives para walang may takot na ninanakawan ang taong bayan. Yun ang duty, hindi yung paligsaan, pagandahan ng damit tuwing zona. Next. Ito naman ngayon. This is about you. Okay? Maybe this is not being taught to you. 
but you have a role in history. Pastor, am I going to be excommunicated or what kung sumobra ako ng time? Pwede pa? Oh, um, uh, we're good getting to the exciting part. Okay. Ang Filipino Chinese Christian community, if you do not know yet, you shape the concept of the Filipino identity. At the time, in the 19th century, tandaan nyo, sino lang ang kayang magpaaral sa mga big time schools ng Dominicans at ng Jesuita? Yung mayayaman. Sino ang mayayaman? Two kinds lang. Spanish mestizos or the Chinese mestizos? Agree? Alam niyo yun, di ba? Okay. Yung Chinese mestizos, they took on Catholic names. Many of them became Catholicized. Then the bulk of the Ilustrados who went to Europe and got the benefits of the Enlightenment teaching and the liberal way and the progressive way of talking about democracy, most of them were Chinese mestizos. So your forefathers, yung mga nauna maaga nag-assimilate, nag-acculturate, yung mga very, very Chinese names nila, yung iba pinalitan nila, ginawa nilang palangka kasi ang ninong nila is a Spanish colonel, the name of palangka. But very Chinese. Si Ko Huang Ko, anong ginawa na? Pinagsama-sama. Ko Huang Ko. Di ba? That's the history of some of your forefathers. Yung mga maaga silang nabigyan ng hasyenda, sila ang traders, Kasi silang nagko-control ng trade, ang dami nilang economic access. Because of economic access, access to education, then, tina mo ha? Kung, uh, and then here it says, hindi na shape ng Chinese immigrant, but, but the Chinese mesiso. Yung Chinese immigrant that decided to marry, intermarry, or assimilate, or become Catholic, or embrace of community, yung Chinese mestizo, sila ang nag-shape ng identity ng Filipinos. It is logical. Bakit? Because of the history, 5,000, 4,000 years of history of the Chinese people trying to define who they are. So, hindi na problema sa kanila ang pag-identify. But when the Spaniards came, the natives were in small villages. And when the friars came in, hinati nila sa mga pueblo, and the pueblos cannot have more than 100 families, so the Spaniards basically prevented interaction and cooperation and political organization, something which other Southeast Asian nations benefited by. The only ones who had a history and a knowledge of political cooperation were the Chinese immigrants. And when they decided they will do something about their identity so that they can blend in, they became the mistakes of population. Nanguna sila sa intelligence, sa economic theory, sa political theory, sa business strategy. Siyempre sila magiging powerful. But this is what is very good. Kita nyo? Yung mga paring Kastila ang nagkwekwento about this. Ha? We're going to get this from the accounts of the Spaniards. Next. Okay, ang maganda. Because of their understanding of the native struggle and what they saw in Europe as the European ordinary man's fight for dignity and freedom, na absorb nila yan. The Chinese mestizos at the time had two choices. Si Sip Sip, the Spanish colonizers, become part of the power structure of Spain. Or Yung mas enlightened sa kanila, such as Gregorio Sanchanco, such as Jose Rizal, who listened to Sanchanco and many others, they said, we are going to cast our lots with the natives. We will be one with the Indios and we will call ourselves Filipinos. So the Filipino nation could not have been imagined and could not have been formed had your forefa forefathers or the forefathers of other Phil Chai now decided that this is their nation, this is their land, they're going to fight for this land together with the leaders of the Indios. 
Andres Bonifacios, the proletariat of the Katipunan. So that the Katipunan was led by those with Chinese blood. So was the revolution. So the political advancement, the intellectual advancement, and the dream for the nation were shaped by the dreams of their forefathers. And that's not an accident. There is no accident in life. God designed that. That's why the Philippines became the first to draft a constitution. Kasi nakapag-aral ang malaking part ng Chinese mestizo class and several natives. Yung mga natives, usually yung mga inaatap ng pare. Yung gumburza. Di ba, lab na lab yung gumburza? All of them are still chai. Rizal. And that's not an accident. Meaning, baka lang hindi nyo pinag-uusapan May sinasabi ang Diyos sa inyo, actually, that you are to continue something he started. And then, we led the first revolution for freedom against Western colonizers and drafted the first constitution in all of Asia. Ayan yung mga pangalan ng mga Filipinos na may Chinese ancestry. Dami na, na? These are the, these are the leadership. And no other people in Asia was able to craft and promulgate their own constitution at that time. Masyado tayong advanced. And it was remarkable because we were doing a constitution in the midst of our war for independence. Okay, next. And during the entire time that the Spaniards were here, the Chinese Mestizo community were leading the formation of many of our educational institutions and many of our religious institutions. So there was only the state together with its military force and its civil government, Spanish Latin. And then the friars setting up schools and religious orders. Marami doon pumaso na Filipinos with Chinese ancestry. So, Lorenzo Ruiz, they called him the first Filipino Catholic saint. Mother Ignacia, founder ng first congregation, Cardinal Sin, si Vidal Tan, si Teodoro Calao, si Manuel Lim. So, even the formation of a nation, marami sa mga ancestors ng Phil Chai, silang responsible for. Then, we also led the first development community in Southeast Asia, which started with YMCA. Hindi nyo alam yun? Nag-start yan dahil sa YMCA. Si James uh, Yen was raised in China. He led the first modern rural reconstruction movement in China and Taiwan and then came to the Philippines. So PRRM was set up. Yan ang nag-pioneer. Kaya nga nagkaroon ng Philippine Business for Social Progress and then CCT. James Yen was a Christian. Thoroughly Christian. But at the same, at that time, ang development world was saying wag isama ang faith. He wanted to but he could not here in the Philippines. So ang PRRM is the first. And it's a pioneer in Asia. So even rural reconstruction and community development na experiment dito sa Philippines comes from James Yen with his Christian heritage. Kaya nagkaroon ng similar national movements sa Colombia, Guatemala, Ghana, India, Thailand, sa Pilipinas. Ginaya yung nangyari sa Pilipinas. Next. After the American missionaries left, who brought, for the first time, nakahawak ng Biblia ang masang Pilipino. Nung umalis sila, sinong nag-take over? Kayo, di ba? Mga lolo niyo, mga pamilya, yung mga binabanggit mo mga grace ng mga pamilya sa FEBC, DZAS, the, missionar the mission schools, the seminaries, Philippine Bible Society, and you led, and the Chai, Phil Chai Christian community has led many of the mercy and grace initiatives in the Philippines. Okay. History therefore proves that the Filipino-Chinese community has been in the forefront 
in leading the direction of this nation. And this is not coincidental. I don't have Chinese blood. So hindi dahil nagsisipsip ako sa inyo at ganoon. No, no. I just recognize that God works in mysterious ways. E kayo ang dinesignate eh, na mag-lead. At one time in our history and still now, you are leading. And it's sovereign hand of God working in the destiny of this nation. How much I wanted to say, oh, lahat invento ng native injo yan. I can't eh. Hindi yun ang katotohanan eh. But I believe that yung heritage nyo is a continuous call. It doesn't stop. Kung nakita nyo na blines kayo sa bansang ito at naging blessing ang Christianity sa bansang ito, hindi ba logical ang conclusion niya na continuous call ito? Your, your, your role perhaps is not to be an immigrant in another country where you will be one of the many middle class families with an American or a Canadian degree. But perhaps you are being called by God to lead this country in the renewal of its natural resources, of its ability to trade, of its difficult foreign policy situation. Perhaps God is asking you to go and explore the gas and oil fields. The marshes of Liguasan. Perhaps God is asking you invest in energy as your ancestry led you to transfer whatever knowledge you had in that great country that your ancestors came from. Perhaps the call is for you to even exceed that. Yes, those without Chinese blood, we have our duty to definitely it falls on the native population, which is majority. But you know that the recent data now shows that we cannot anymore count. But perhaps that the intermarriage has been so intense that more than 50% has Chinese blood. So your ancestors have chosen to really fuse your culture with the culture of the natives. And that is by God's design. So the question is, if this is true, where now do we see the biggest signs of hope? And I'm here for the good news also. I gave you a glowing description of how good the role of your ancestors has been. Now I give you hope in the Filipino youth. This is Barn Open Research. Barna is the most famous research organization in the Christian world. And he says that, look, the leftmost data are about the global youth. 46% only believe that Jesus offers hope. Among Filipino youth, 76%, a 30% gap. Which means because Filipino youth have the highest hope in Jesus, it is also where we should invest in for the highest return for the kingdom. Agree? While we still have time. Because this time is not forever. There is this window of opportunity. This was 2021. It's now 2024. So flash quickly through the others. You can see always uh, flash through all the Barna slides. I can assure you all the Barna slides show that the Filipinos are so motivated to contribute to the world. They're so positive about their confidence that they can contribute to the work of justice. And they are the most optimistic. So you have the richest soil for the gospel and the advancement of the kingdom. No other people has this good soil that's open to the things of God. But many young people are falling away from church because they no longer believe in how organized religion is being run. So, okay, now I'll now go to the bad news. The bad news is in 25 years, this is what happened to America. In 1998, you can see 68% believed in patriotism. 
in 2023, it's only 38%. They don't believe in, in jo jo John Kennedy's don't ask what your country can do for you, but ask what your country can do, what you can do for your country. To many, that's BS already. And just imagine, in one generation, 25 years, having religion from 62% to 39%. 20 plus points. Religion is not important to a majority of Americans. Having children from nearly 60% to now just 30%, barely 30%. So Americans will stop having children at one point. Community involvement from 40 plus, for 48 percent to a high of 60 percent to a low of what 25 percent they don't care and now what is their highest value it was shown 1998 to 20 from money being 30 percent important now it's important to 40 percent of the population a 10 percent increase you can just imagine what the bible is saying about that kind of society right and it's one generation. And it's possible in the Philippines if we do not stand on our inheritance. Because in SWS, from 2019 to 20, 2020, from December 2019 to 2020, there was a 10-point drop in one year about the importance of religion. If we do not show that Christ is alive in every area of life and he is here to provide solutions, in one year, you can see a 10% drop of Filipinos' belief in the importance of religion. Next. Okay, this is what we're doing. We're investing in the young. Me, Kaloy, Ruth, and many others in the B1I movement, I've shown you the map, how far we've gone. We are developing, helping shape it's the Holy Spirit's work, helping identify young Christians who are willing to take up leadership roles and be missionaries in leading this country. The mission field is not just the church. The mission field is society. In public governance, in social media, in media and the arts, in social wealth creation, which is business, your field, many of yours is that field, and in causes. For them to see their completeness in Christ means they give up everything for the love of God and understanding that since this is the country that God is asking them to make the people taste a foretaste of his kingdom, then they will give everything to that mission. It's a mission. And unless it's a lifetime and long-term vision, it will not produce the transformation we are waiting for. So I'm talking about very idealistic, hopeful, young Christians who are calling on the powers of heaven to help them shape this nation. That is what Bawat Isa Mahalga is all about. That is what we are doing on a full-time basis. And again, I could not have done this if I was still in the Supreme Court. So, my call to you, my brothers and sisters, I have given my life to this cause. There is no higher good for me than to see our nation transformed for Christ. Will you answer that call? Help the river that is leading to the shalom of the Philippine nation to be formed. It is taking shape right now, even as we speak. God is calling on his young people to fully believe in the great destiny that he has for this country. Strengthen those rivulets, strengthen the hands that need strengthening. Let's build a Pilipinas as God designs it to be built. Maraming salamat. These are my contact points. You can take pictures of my contact points. Ayan po si Ruth. Ruth, please stand up. Ayan po. Email, her contact points, and then the other contact points are in the next slide. Ayan po, bawat isang mahalaga. 
Si Pastor Caloy, this is also his lifetime vision. I'm looking at the future for my five apos and for Caloy's future apos. Join us in forming that future for your apos and your children as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let us all please give a warm round of applause to our guest of honor and speaker, former Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Serrano. <laughs>